The vast majority of patients uh, in this study were treated as third line or, or, or as third line or beyond, or third line, really third line uh, treatment. So they are heavily pretreated uh, patients. Um, Patients do not require to be PDL1 positive to go into the study, although the uh, PDL1 expression was um, prospectively evaluated. So all uh, in investigators have to submit tumor uh, upfront to be evaluated for PDL1 expression. Uh, but they can be PDL1 negative and go into this study. Uh, in fact, apart, although I mentioned there was a, a, a DLT with, with uh, one of the patients, but in fact, for the rest of the study, uh, this combination of uh, pembrolizumab and remosumab was very well uh, uh, tolerated. There was hardly any uh, treatment-related uh, grade 3 toxicities, all less than 10%. Uh, you know, especially when you look at uh, side effects related to uh, uh, endogenic, like hypertension, uh, venous thromboembolisms, and all that they were all very very low uh, uh, low rate uh, and also um, the toxicity related immunotherapy uh, you know in terms of you know uh, colitis endocrine all that were all uh, observed at a very very low incidence of less than 10 percent in fact most of the uh, toxicity at most only got one or two patients with that toxicity so it's really well tolerated now in terms of efficacy at the moment because the follow-up is still very, very short because the first patient only went in around November 2015 and the database log for this particular uh, uh, presentation was in October 2016 so you can see it's a really short follow-up at the moment now we observed four uh, objective response uh, which is 10% uh, well you might say well you know it does not look you know a lot at the moment you know for a 10% response rate but what we also observe is there is a, a good number of patients with uh, prolonged disease stabilization and in fact that is what we've seen is that actually a lot of patients have a very long time where the disease uh, is being stabilized. Now the progression-free survival and the overall survival at the moment is still very immature. Uh, we're still waiting for uh, more time follow-up before we know. Um, but one other thing I would say is when we look at immuno, uh, immunotherapy in gastric cancer, my own sort of benchmark uh, uh, time points is in fact six month progression-free survival and a 12 month uh, OS. Uh, I think you know because if you look at the median for PFS and the median for OS, you really are not getting the true picture of what is the benefit of these type of agents. So we're still waiting for, the, uh, for, for this study to have more mature follow-up. So, um, the, the, as I mentioned, there is a first-line cohort which is uh, which actually, in fact, just completed recruitment uh, very recently in the last week. Uh, so, uh, hopefully, with those data, together with the more mature data from the from the second, third-line uh, cohorts, we'll be able to uh, have a more a robust assessment of this combination of ramazuma and pamelizumab to see how we can move forward in terms of the future development of this combination.